What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fyle and the man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking about week seven of the NFL season. And uh, it's a very, very early first, very early look. So keep that in mind. But uh, I've been a couple of, had a, you know, what I think three out of the last four had really good weeks. So I'm, I'm, things are starting to pick up. You've had some good ones as well. So we're ready to, ready now to win the big one. Hopefully, this is the week for it. Yeah, I just want, you know, want to make good plays and be in contention. Again, that's all I've been doing so far is, is, is Max entering the Millie and on, yeah. all, on, on, on the FanDuel and the DraftKings. Um, and uh, uh, I'm probably going to do the same this week. Um, uh, I'll probably be – I don't know if I'm going to be available for live. Uh, I'll be at coaching a basketball tournament, so depending on my schedule for that okay. Sunday, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's just get into it. Uh, I, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of know where I want to go, at least as of Tuesday at 1 PM seems like a couple of pretty logical, logical games. Um, again, there's, there, I guess could always be news that comes out, but we'll see what the, we'll see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's going to be, uh, interesting to go through with you. So let's, uh, let's pull up your screen and we'll go game by game here. Um, this is uh let's see. I think we have less like really, really interesting games this week than we than we usually do. Um all right, Sheets, why don't you start off the first one? I'm just gonna grab my pen real quick. And, so just so what I have, just so you guys know, I have three games that I'm will that that I like both sides of. And then I also have two kind of like individual teams that I don't particularly like the other side too much. And this is um and this is one of the of the uh of the choice Bs, uh the the teams where I like one side but not so much the other. Um, so I do like Baltimore a little bit here. Um, uh, I don't really have too much on the Cleveland side. Uh, I guess the, 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 you play Lamar, Mark Andrews is just, you know, just always the man. And, uh, and, De and, and Duvernay would be another way I would go if I was going to snack this game. So I'd like Lamar with uh, Andrews and Duvernay. I'm going to have, I guess, a little trouble finding a run back on the Cleveland side if I do decide to stack really the game but uh who says I have to anyway so so I, I definitely like Lamar I like uh Andrew I like Duvernay um and that's pretty much all I got from this game yeah I, li I like Lamar to Andrews um as I always kind of do um I think you you know Lamar's had a couple down games in a row Cleveland Cleveland has actually some 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 really talented defensive players but They've been they've been getting uh beat up a little bit, and I think that you have a good run back. Uh, the secondary has been really questionable for Cleveland, so uh, so for Baltimore. So I don't mind uh, taking Amari Cooper on the other side, and that's mostly uh, pretty much what I want to do in this game. I don't really the running backs. Uh, it's it's been a decent enough running back matchup, but you know I think I might lean Hunt just because he's so cheap at fifty four hundred. But I don't think I need to do either of them. Um, I, I do love Chubb in general. I don't think there's any reason why he couldn't have a game here. He had a monster game for me against them a couple of years ago and won me. I think I think that's third in a big tournament. But I don't I don't know. I don't really feel like uh, like I need to do anything. I will throw out. Uh, so Demarcus Robinson should be out there for a little bit more. He's thirty eight hundred. I don't I don't know that I'm going to want to do that. Um, thirty six hundred. Excuse me. And uh, and super large field. We get to take one shot on Andy Isabella. Maybe I'll consider that. As of right now, I'm I'm not as interested in the Baltimore receivers. Duvernay would be the most interesting, I guess, to me. But uh, we, you know, if, if Bateman is out again, I, I do think that there's a there's a chance for somebody else to have a game here. But probably getting a little too thin on a full slate uh, for me. I think it's mostly Lamar to Andrews with Cooper as a run back is my favorite part of this game. And I also like Andrews as a one off uh, in, on, in lineups where you're not stacking this game as well. Mm -hmm. um, but top my top overall tight end play on the slate, so. Should yeah. be should be not a particularly uh, audacious take, but that's what it is. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think it is. Um, all right, Tampa Bay, Carolina. What do you what do you like here, She So you have Tampa coming off of a, off of a pretty 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 nasty loss at Pittsburgh, and you have Carolina basically is like lost their whole season. I mean, they're they're just they're just in another world. Uh, they, they, they the coach lost their locker room like like four weeks ago. They finally fired the coach last week, and this week the new coaching staff gets into a freaking fight with Robbie Anderson, who leaves who leaves <laughs> the field. Okay, um, and they're still, I believe, still 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 riding with, I don't know, whether it's PJ Walker or Baker Mealfield field or whatever. Well, I mean, the one thing I would say about Carolina, I mean, they they were. They they were pesky for a while last night, mostly defensively. Um, 
And they did, if you wanted to try this, they, they did commit to, to getting C, uh, CMC the ball um, for, for because they had no choice. I mean, <laughs> they, they, I mean what are you going to do? Like, you're going to try to pass on the Rams with uh, with uh, everybody breathing down your neck with P.J. Walker, you know? So, um, so if you wanted to play CMC, I mean, it's listen, it's a ridiculous matchup to try it, but but um, uh, that's the one bright bright spot I would say. Now on the Tampa side, um, I do expect Tampa to to bounce back. I do expect them to win rather, you know, win pretty handily. And as a result, uh, you know, Fournette's going to show up as probably a very strong running back play. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also am getting. Tampa as kind of a one-off-ish type team to play offensively. Um, and if you did that, it would be no surprise Brady and Godwin and Mike Evans. Um, nothing fancy there. Um, I just I don't know if I don't know if Carolina is necessarily the team that's that, that you want to do that with. Um, but that that's where I am right now. I think I do think that 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 listen, one thing about Brady, you might think he's this, that, and the other thing, but he's still one of the top like five like competitors in like the history of sports. You know what I mean? So he's going to, he's, he's, I think he's going to come off that, 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 that loss. And, and, uh, and, you know, this whole team is going to put, probably put on a good performance, whatever that means. Yeah. So uh, don't be surprised if Tampa doesn't put up a big freaking score in this game. Um, so that's why I do have them on my list. Yeah. I, I think that, I think a Tampa, whatever, let's get right stack is it makes some sense, you know, like you could you yeah. play, play Brady to Godwin and Ann Evans. Uh, they're, you know, you can, you can get in other things and they're affordable enough. Um, see if Julio Jones plays this week. You could maybe include him as what, well, maybe not all three of them, but as one of the two. Um, but I, but I, I'm on board. Of, I'm fine with that. I do like Fournette and that's a way to get, I think Fournette's going to be pretty popular uh, on the Carolina side. It's really hard for me to do anything here. I understand the McCaffrey thing. I don't think I'll do it. The only guy who I'm, I'm going to, I think they're, I mean, they're trying to get him the ball. They just don't have anybody to throw him the ball, but uh, DJ Moore is 4,900 and it wouldn't surprise me with no matter who's quarterback. I think that he's going to have like, I mean, he, he should have double digit targets or right around there in this game. And uh, I'm okay with taking some shots with well, DJ Moore. That's pretty well, much you know, you know, I, I, I kind of glossed over it, but I forgot the impact of this. I mean, Robbie Anderson is going to be gone. Right. So, I mean, uh, are we talking about like she Smith and, 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 and that type of stuff? I don't know how they're supposed to move. I mean, what, I don't know why it would be any different. Robbie Anderson didn't score any points. I don't know why. No, he, I, I know. I know. I get it. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, Robert Anderson's yeah, he had the first game of the year. He had a, he had a game other than that. I think he scored five fantasy points, like every game or zero, okay. um, but may, maybe uh, as of right now, I'm not, I'm not looking at it, but I'm, uh, I'm not trying to overly pick on this game and DJ Moore is so cheap that I think I'd rather just do that. Um, I still think, I hope they, I mean, he might be traded by the end of the week, so who knows? Um, and, and and Buck's defense is obviously going to be pretty strong here. Yeah, it's an, an, a great play. It's just a matter of, can you afford 3,900 for your defense? Yeah. Um, all right, so let's talk about Atlanta, Cincinnati. Uh, I, I, I guess I'll, I'll run out and start this one off. Uh, so Atlanta, just for the, for the record, uh, Atlanta is now 6-0 and against the spread this season. <laughs> they're, they're undefeated against the spread. Nobody should try to pick any game and just go, oh, well, they're going to get smoked here because that they've, they've been tough. Um, I really like the idea of getting some action in on this game and looks like the weather should be fine. I, I always love, you know, and it hit last week uh, when I wasn't, you know, playing as much, but uh, you know, you had, you had the, the burrow to chase stack again. What I like about stacking up sometimes is it, it's one of the teams I feel the best about taking two receivers because you, you know, you, you get double digit targets for both Higgins and Chase in the game. I think that's very, very reasonable for this game. Um, and, and I would throw Tyler Boyd into the mix. I think this is a really good game um, to uh, to try to get pieces of. I don't know what we're going to see as term with Atlanta in terms of who's going to be the running back. I think that we've seen, we, uh, we saw Algier get most of the work, but uh, pretty much no success. Actually, they both got a lot of work, Caleb Huntley too. So I'm sort of sort of up in the air because it looks like it's basically a split a split situation. Um, but I don't mind Drake London or Kyle Pitts on the run back. Kyle Pitts is 4,300. I know he hasn't been what we're supposed to be in all these things. It's a good matchup for him and he's 4,300 and, uh, at least as, you know, at least he caught a touchdown last week. Uh, I could, I could get behind Pitts as a run back, but I like the Atlanta Cincinnati. I like the, I like the overall, uh, Burrow stack with, uh, trying to run some pieces back, like whether it be Pitts or, uh, or London and potentially one of the running backs, but overall, I just have this game in general as a target. 
Yeah. So as I mentioned, I Tampa and Baltimore is the two kind of like one off teams. And I have three like key games. And this is one of the key games I have. Um, Atlanta, Cincy, and, and pretty much all the guys that you mentioned. Um, I, I would add that I currently have Joe Mixon as the best overall running back play on the slate. Yeah. Um, so let's throw that into the mix. I mean, you got like, you have a, you have a, I think you have a pretty elite environment here um, where, where you just have to get the combinations right. I mean, you mentioned all the guys. I mean, London and Kyle Pitts for Atlanta, Chase Higgins, and I'll throw in Mixon for, for, for Cincinnati. And uh, I think this is, you know, presuming the weather's good, um, I think this this game has a lot of potential. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I agree with you. I do think Atlanta keeps close because they keep every game close. Excuse me. They scored a million points against a team that nobody scores any points against last right. week. Yeah, you know, yeah. so what can I tell you? Um, uh, so, yeah, I, this is like one one key game for me right off the bat. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the only thing I want to throw out there about Mixon is, Boy, man, it's been frustrating. Um, he hasn't put up one game in the season that we would take at his price. Uh, it worries me. Like, I, I don't know why. He still gets all the all the usage and, all, I mean, all the – they just seem so so contented to be airing it out downfield. Uh, and he, and, he, and even when he gets there, he's, he's catching touchdown passes. So I, I'm fine with Mixon. Uh, I am good with him because I like the game stack. But I, it's, he's been frustrating. I just want to throw that out there. He's been a little frustrating to f- fantasy owners. I think we expected him to be a little, a little bit better scoring this season, even though he hasn't had like bad games. It's just nothing special at all so far this season from him. But this is definitely a game I'm going to be very high on. Where do you stand with Detroit and Dallas sheets? Yeah, so here's where I stand with that, Detroit and Dallas. So right now, um, I currently am projecting Cooper Rush's quarterback, right? But but from what I'm seeing, like Prescott – probably going to play. I mean, I don't know if that's probable or not, but, but he's trending there. And all, all I'll say is this, like if he's actually healthy enough to play and he's got a healthy Gallup now and CD lamb and no, no Brandon, see that catch that he almost made last week. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that was crazy. Yeah. Against Detroit's defense. I mean, if, 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 if Prescott's legit ready to go, I mean, he could throw five touchdown passes in this game. You know, I mean, yeah. I don't know. It, it's uh uh, I don't, again, I don't have them projected right now, so I can't tell, see what he's going to look like, but Detroit's basically Coors Field. Mm-hmm. For, for a, so I imagine that, that I'll kind of want to play these guys once projections kind of adjust if in fact Prescott is, is in. Um, and for the, for the life of me, I can't imagine why I wouldn't play Dallas anyway, you know, mm-hmm. like even, even if, if it rushes in, I mean, like, I don't know that, that that's where I'm at in this game. And, and if, and I'll tell you this, um, as far as runbacks go, I don't have any interest in playing anybody against the Cowboys. If you want to know the truth right now, I don't blame uh, you. I think Goff is going to get obliterated back there. Um, uh, and I, I, I want this is this is like a if, if if I think Prescott is back, I think this could this could be a good old thirty five to nothing special. I think uh, that's that's my opinion. Yeah, um, I will throw out one Detroit name. I like Hawkinson. Um, sure. He's the only one I can sort of get behind, but I, I tend to like, I actually kind of like the idea of, a, of a, like, it seems like, first of all, it seems like a really good spot to, to bring, to bring Pret Dak yeah. back. Yes. This is a team that's given up the most points in the NFL yes, um, by a pretty large margin. And you got the CD and, and, and Gallup and Brown all to all they're healthy. I think this could be a really good spot to, uh, to attack Dallas with m- maybe a lamb Gallup. I'm sorry, maybe a, a Prescott lamb Gallup lineup, something like that. And I even think if Dalton Schultz plays that he's really, he's interesting enough at 3,600, but, uh, but I, I could get, I, it's going to, that's a totally up in the air one. We'll see what happens with Dallas as the, as the week goes on. Um, as it stands right now, my personal take is if, if he doesn't play, I like Detroit to cover this game. Um, I actually do. I, 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 I think that because they had one really, really bad game, every other game, it's not like that. It's not like they, they, they weren't there. I mean, they lost by three, they lost by four, they lost by three. And then they won by nine in their other previous games. And they they score points every week. Uh, they give up points every week. So this could be one of those games that, that maybe maybe I'll find a little bit more I might want to do later this week. And that would that would also mean that I would I'd want DeAndre Swift to be back if that's going to happen. I don't necessarily want to play him, but I, I just want any weapon possible because that Dallas defense is no joke. But at the same time, if they're up 28 nothing, somebody's going to get some points on the other side. They're going to be throwing the ball so much. That's why Hawkinson felt like the, the most logical one for me. But I, I don't I don't have a shot. I don't have a problem with taking a shot on, on St. Brown either. Um, one thing about, you know, the, the Cowboys defense last year with with the, with the corners, they 
They were really good at, 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 at causing turnovers. And they also were really good at getting beaten downfield. It hasn't been the case this year. Um, partly because they don't have time to get beaten downfield with Micah Parsons breathing down your neck every play. Um, but I, I'm open to looking at this potentially as a game stack, even though as of right now, it does seem like Dallas could win this game by 30 points. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm still up in the air on that one. I want to wait till later in the week till I commit. Uh, okay, Jackson- so, so, so Jacksonville Giants, um, this is the only thing I'm sure about is this, is that the Giants very well could make the playoffs. The Giants very well could have a really good season. But it's not going to be because of their performance this upcoming game because they have they are going to get waxed by Jacksonville. Ooh. Jacksonville is a stone lock in this game. I love that it. Is, that's for sure. Um, I don't have much as far as, um, and and the Giants can still be good, but you just you just can't do this. You just can't be. You can't play in consecutive order. Your big home game against Dallas, followed by a, a, a neutral site game in London or whatever it was against Green Bay or whatever that was, and then and then have a good insane comeback win at home against the Ravens. To go then fly to Jacksonville and win, it's just not, it's just never happened. Um, so Jacksonville's a lock. I don't really have much as in the way of fantasy in this game, though. Um, you like anything fantasy wise in this game, or any opinion at all? No. I oh no, oh, sorry, except for Barkley. I do like Barkley as one of the top five running backs in this game. Yeah, I have Barkley on there. Um, uh, I I don't really love anything else. I just would point out that they're starting to try to get the ball to Evan Ingram a little bit more, and he's thirty three hundred. Okay, um, and that actually that actually kind of fits along with your 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 hey even if they get whack even if they 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 wax them or whatever I I do think they're gonna try to to, to get him some targets um so he's the he's the next most interesting if, if Marvin Jones is out I I think you could throw I think you could just play Zay Jones anyway um but I'm not excited oh, Zay about Jones him. I forgot about that I do have Zay Jones sorry as as a good point per dollar wide receiver yeah. The, the only caveat I would say is the Giants have been the best pass defense in the NFL so far this season. Um, they've been really, really, really good against just all wide receivers. Um, so I, 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 I would be really reaching to try to play anyone outside of Barkley in this game. Maybe Ingram would be the one other guy we consider. I guess you can consider Bellinger too at the same sort of the same vein as, as Ingram, but nothing, nothing I'm excited about except for, uh, what did the Jags defense cost this week? 30, that seems like a pretty good price for a Jag for the Jags defense this week. Um, I like I like I like your call sheet. I'm with you. I like the Jags to the Jags to win this game. Um, all right, Titans and Colts. Um, Derrick Henry at 8200 uh, against a team that hasn't been very good against the run. Maybe off the off the, off the bye. Let's go. Yeah, and and then and then this is like when he's he's supposed to start heating heating up pretty soon. Uh, Michael Pittman has proved that he's absolutely worth his price. <laughs> he had 16 targets the other day, 13 catches, uh, 29 fantasy points without scoring a touchdown. That's pretty good. So I, uh, I, I'm, I have no problem with Pittman in a great matchup for him, and I have no problem with Henry in a great matchup. And I think that's just how I would do it: is just Pittman and Henry, um, both as strong plays. But it's not a game that I want to go crazy with because both teams are going to try and grind the ball and. Uh, and I, I mean, I get Jonathan Taylor too, obviously, if he's, in, if he, if he's, I, I think that he's going to play, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, I prefer Henry to Taylor for what it's worth. Um, but I think that, I think, I think this is okay. I, I think, I think like every, all these are okay. None of them make, have me really excited. Okay. So you tell, you say, Oh, he's going to, he's going to heat up soon. You just let me know when that happens. He's like 30 freaking fantasy points every week in the last like three weeks. And he's coming into a freaking buy. Um, I, he's I think he's, up. Okay, he's heating up. Well, I'll let you have that. He's already yeah. heated up. He's already heated up. That's my. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you're right. Um, is, and he's getting targets out of the backfield. Um, remember the reason why like these spend ups haven't been so great in the last couple of weeks. We've had all this like insane running back value. Um, just not exactly sure if that's going to be the case this week. I think we can start go back to be playing the regular guys. You know. Um, with that said, I'm now I'm sure the whole country is going to get injured and. And some Joe Smith guy is going to be three K in a lock or something like that. I don't know, but mm-hmm. um, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm into that. He's not. He's certainly. I'll tell you this. He's certainly not showing up that way from a projection perspective. Um, but he hasn't looked good from in my projections all year. And I'm play, and they keep playing him, and he keeps on. I I, I hate to say it this way again because again I'm biased, but he's actually run kind of bad in some of these games. <laughs> like like mm-hmm. like one of these games, he had like twenty fantasy points at the half. You know, whatever it is, I, mean, I think he's, he's, he did. He's really, he's really doing well this year. Um, yeah. kind of weirdly under the radar, I think. 
I just, um, it has been under the radar, but you're right. He's having a ra- he had a really bad uh, bad start, and then he's just been on fire. Um, I yeah. agree with you. Yeah, but but Pittman, I I I agree with that. I mean, like he's 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 legit. You know, yeah. so uh, and you and by the way, like if, if he was a little cheaper, I would be talking about Alec Pierce this week too. But he's not. But you, well, he's on. He's, he's, he's not. He's not. He, what do you mean? He's not under eight k. Let me see. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> But he's but but I'll give you credit, man. You, you you nailed that one when when he had he had zero catches on the season. You you said he's going to start having and since then he's he's put up he's certainly put up games in all of them. Uh, again, little you'd want him to be a little bit cheaper in this matchup. Yeah. But uh, but I I do think that that's uh that was a good call. Um. All right. Well, some there's some ugly ones out here then this week. Oh, look at this game. Oh. Is this is so ugly. But isn't there a way that like we could make a similar argument for a Green Bay like? a big green bay game well it's we could have said that after they lost the giants and they came out and laid an egg against the jets i mean no, what we, how many teams have lost to the giants and either jets these new giants. york teams are actually good or the packers are just freaking done you know what i mean i don't know i like to think it's the former i'd like to think that that, the, that these new york teams are actually not bad and the uh and uh and the packers are, are still decent i mean i did see the packers put up a couple of decent games this year right i mean yeah, I don't think I want any part of this from a fantasy perspective, though. Um, I don't know. You want to you want to take a shot with Aaron Rodgers hasn't scored twenty fantasy points in the game this season. I mean, and I, but I am open to 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 maybe saying, okay, let's just roll with with him to Lazard and Dobbs. Um, they've actually both been fine. I, I'm not excited about it. Um, you did have 12 targets. I know they were down the whole game, but 12 targets for Tanyan last week. Finally, uh, finally had a, an actual game. Uh, I, I could get behind a, a, just a simple green Bay full hammer stack, like a, a, a two or three receivers with Rogers and just hope that they can, they can just put it on them. But I am not excited about any of it. Um, and I am probably not going, I don't, I don't like anything on the other side, particularly. I, I think that I, I keep saying at some point I would, just, I think McLaurin will have a game. It's, I don't know when that's going to be. Um, but I, I, I do think the, my only interest is going to be in a, a tournament or two. I'll, I will make a, just a full green Bay stack. And I'm not even sure I want to run it back with anything. Uh, yeah, that's it's another one. It's also a tough, it's a tough spot for green Bay too. I mean, like, boy, oh boy, that's good. I think that game's going to be really ugly. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably. We'll see. we'll see. I don't know. I, I don't think that I, I don't think Washington's defense is good. So Speaking of a defensive, what could be uh could be weird is 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 Jets Jets at Broncos, right? Um, I don't know what to make of this. I'm not, I I don't know what to make of either of these teams. I'll give I'll give you an example. So so at like the beginning of the season, when you know you are analyzing through a survivor pool map, you know, okay, so who are we going to take here? Who are we going to take here? Who are we going to take there? They have like projected point spreads by what these teams are going to be like in the future. Before the season started. Denver was projected to be a nine point favorite at home against the Jets, right? Because, you know, they, they have, Will, Russell wasn't coming. The Jets were hopeless. Right? Like, this game is lucky to be three in this game. I don't know what the spread is, but probably something like that, right? Um, yep. It's amazing what happens. Uh, I One thing about the Jets is I they're, they're a team that's driven by their defense. I mean, their defense is, has been that one dude over the, you got his name now, the rookie. I mean, he's insane. Um, that, that safety. Uh, oh, oh, I thought you had that. Sorry, go ahead. Think whatever about his name is with, with the okay. three names. I forget who it is. Anyway, um, he's great, and and I have to say that for all the all the the the, the trash that they're talking about Denver, I don't I don't think they're playing that badly actually. Like like they they listen they're going into I mean, beating the Chargers is, isn't so isn't so easy, you know. Like uh, they went to overtime. I think both both coaches tried their best to lose, but but. In the end, uh, I guess the Broncos tried a little harder to lose than the Chargers did, I suppose. But <laughs> I don't know. I, I think this game is uh, – boy, I was about to say it's kind of a pass. But then I, I go back. I'm, see, I'm a sucker. I do the same thing everybody else is. I'm like, but in the end, it's Russell Wilson with with with, with two good receivers. Maybe I should give it a shot. I'm just, I just don't think I'm going to do it. I think I'm just going to just pass on the game. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably where I'm at. I, I, I don't mind Brees Hall. Um, okay. I can I kind of like keep playing this guy. Like, and, and he, he's, I think he's good. Um, I think these Jets are better than people think. It's, just, it's a terrible matchup. That they're both. It's not even the Denver. I don't think people are criticizing Denver. Like their defense has been great. They just can't right. score points. They scored twenty points one time this season, and they lost that <sighs> ten. Um, that's rough. This is the NFL. Like you can't. I don't know. You can't get away with that stuff. But uh, 
but yeah, nothing, nothing that's overwhelmingly standing out except for, I, I don't mind Brees Hall. Um, and I, I guess that if you wanted to take a shot with Sutton or Judy, I'm, I'm never going to argue that, but I just don't, I don't feel good about any of it, to be honest with you. And, uh, Probably going to be probably going to be a pass for me. Boy, Houston, Vegas. I was expecting to get to more of this when I just before I looked at projections, I looked at this stuff. I'm like, ooh, maybe you could play Vegas, you know, against Houston or whatever. Have the girl run back with 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 the uh, with Cooks or maybe even the running back for Houston, the Pierce. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, I'm not getting to them right now. I'm just kind of hoping that by the end of the week it gets that way because I kind of. I don't know. I, I kind of want to do this. And and I, and I think that uh, I think Devontae Adams could have a good game coming off of his nonsense this past uh, week or two. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Maybe this game is some is somewhat sneaky. Uh, I think, like we said, Houston's pes- pesky. They could stay in this game. And um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I have to see where projections take me. But as, as of right now, I'm not getting to the game, but I kind of I kind of want to. Yeah, I, I get, I get you. I, 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 I the same, the same initial thoughts that you did. Basically, um, uh, Houston is that 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 you know they they play really good football for like three quarters every week and then lose. Uh, they can't seem to stop the run, and I will just go right back to Josh Jacobs at, at sixty five hundred, coming off of two monster games. Um, that didn't didn't used to be my favorite thing to do in tournaments, but he's really, really been putting up some monster, monster games. Yeah. and even with Devonte Adams. Even as even as even as he struggles, he has three catches last week, but for three catches for 124 yards and, and two touchdowns. <laughs> um, so I, I, do, I do like Adams and I like Jacobs, uh, both as plays that I would like to get overweight on, which brings in guys like Damian Pierce as a potential run back. Um, but but I mean, really hard to find anything else that I feel great about. I don't feel great about Cooks. Uh, Nico Collins is not the worst idea. But I, again, it's like, it feels like mostly like a stack or fade game with the exception of I'm going to have exposure to Adams and Jacobs for sure. And and high enough so to where I think I could actually say that the Jacobs right now should be a priority. I mean, if we're going to talk about mixing at 7K, you have the best matchup in football for for Jacobs as a, as a, as a running back. And he's coming off of two 30 plus games where they've given him, what, 26 and 32, 33 looks. Uh, that's if you're going to get that many touches, I don't care who you're playing, much less the worst team in football. How is Jacobs not our number one back at 6,500 or one of the number one, one of the top backs? He'll be popular, but uh, but I do like him quite a bit. Starting to feel more and more like a four, like a three running back week to me as we go through this. Maybe maybe occasionally a double tight end, but um, yeah, certainly not not an exciting. It, it looked like it would be more exciting than it is. I'll put it that way. But we so do have one that's exciting coming up next, I think. Yeah, so I don't know whether this is going to hold, whatever, but like right now, and this is kind of scary when you think about it, but like right now, I have Seattle as, as clearly the best team um, to stack this week. And then I have the Chargers kind of like right around there, like fifth or something like that. So it seems to like it's a really natural kind of game stack here, which is kind of which is kind of weird when you think about it, considering that Seattle put up a grand total of like 19 points last week and the Chargers put up a total of 16 this past week. Um, but nonetheless, that's, that's where I'm at. Um, especially look on the Seattle side, you still have Walker who's cheap as well um, from the running back position. So I like all those guys, Geno Smith, Walker, um, both receivers. Um, and then on, on the LAC side, um, you know, the, I was about to say the normal guys, but I don't know exactly who that is right now because, because, <laughs> because Keenan Allen was, was inactive last night, but maybe he'll, he comes back. Michael Williams really got the got the got the Patrick Sertan treatment. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Last night he was shut out of that game. He really. Um, was. And then so even the announcers, but the announcers were like, "Yeah, I know that he's carbon number. Maybe you should, should throw it to him sometime too." But listen, buddy, you know what I mean? Like, right? It's, right. it's hard. You know? um, yeah. But listen, I mean Palmer, Carter, all these guys sort of got run. It's kind of hard to know where where to go. I think the guy that I was most confident in was actually Gerald Everett. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, so he'd probably be the most confident guy from receiving for the charges for me, I guess. Um, but look, uh, but Mike Williams, I mean, you can pat, pat, take Patrick's turn off his ass. You know, I could probably go right back to him. And Eckler is going to be a good play as well. So I think this game is uh, one of the, I guess, one of the more obvious stacking games there is. Yeah, I think I think it is. Um, I think that it's pretty pretty clear to know what you, where you want to go with it too. Um, both Metcalf and Lockett. Lockett seems too cheap again. Um, there is a ceiling for both these guys. You're going to have some down games. That's just the way that things are going to work. 
Uh, it's how it always is with every receiver, much less uh, what happens in Seattle. And they, you know, coming off of a 19 to nine, sort of an ugly game against Arizona. Um, I, I do like this game. I, I, I like Kenneth Walker um, at, at running back. I like bo- all the Seattle receivers, uh, especially, I guess I give it a little bit of an edge to Lockett because we're going to need to start saving somewhere, but Lockett and Metcalf. Um, and on the other side, I, I have no problem going right back to Mike Williams, a little bit expensive, but if there's no, if there's no Keenan Allen, um, otherwise I, I do think Josh Palmer is completely reasonable. He had 12 targets last night. Hasn't really had that that big big game, but has come damn close a bunch of times. And I think that he's he's totally reasonable. I like Everett as well, um, and I also like the. Uh, I, I, I I'm very frustrated with trying to figure out the Seattle tight end thing. I, I do think Noah Fant is. I mean, this is a talented guy, and I like the matchup. They just and they finally looked to him as their primary tight end last week. Yeah. Maybe it's thin, but no offense at, at 3,100, I'm probably going to take some shots on. Um, but I, uh, if I had to pick, you know, one side of it with the, with the quarterbacks being priced where they are, it feels easier to play Geno Smith, who, by the way, has outscored Herbert this year, fantasy wise. Um, I don't think a lot of people had that predicted. And uh, again, though, uh, the, the, and then maybe I was, we were, we we're bearing it, trying to, trying to find too many other things from the chargers because Austin Eckler is a tremendous play. Um, even at 8,300, I think you could definitely argue with him in that same category of the top end guys like the Derrick Henry's he just puts up a monster game every week and he gets I mean he had 10 what did he have last week at night 10 catches um you've got so many ways to get there with him as a beast yeah. yeah he's awesome I mean and he's gotten so much stronger too like he's actually like looks better the whole plan was to play him less but right now this team needs to win games and uh, I like this as, as probably my favorite game, uh, along with Cincinnati Atlanta. That we, uh, you know, yeah. the only thing that's going to get in my way of this game is, is, is again, when I, when I, when you, when you talk through the Seattle options, it's like easier, you know, um, right. The charges, it's a little harder. I mean, like, Tracy Park. Right. Like, like Mike Williams. Yeah. Um, I guess that's just be the one you, I, I use, I guess. I mean, uh, I, 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 Williams at 75. Shouldn't you then be playing Eckler at 83 instead? right that's the only that's the only i keep thinking of but but mike Williams. oh he said, he said 72 actually not 75 but still it's it's just eckler gets there every time mark williams yeah i don't know I, but either way i think that they i think yeah it is easy, easier for the seattle guys but if you're going to find one run back and you wanted to stack seattle i think that it probably would be eckler for me but i have no problem with williams or ever instead i just think that you can find a lot of pieces in this game and it's probably the best game to target uh outside of Cincinnati, Atlanta, in my opinion. Um, okay, so Kansas City against uh, San Francisco. So I want to shout out my uh, – those of you who didn't remember, I mean, since I gave out Jacksonville this uh, this week, wanna, I want to victory lap my one uh, against the spread pick from last week, if those of you don't remember, and that was the – that was Kansas City-Buffalo under in the first half. That which is right. That's right. It's what you said. And it worked out exactly the way I said it was going right. to. Um, uh so I like this game a lot. <laughs> uh, the Kansas City San Francisco game from from a fantasy perspective. And one of the one things I did well last week, um, I actually had like a decent amount of Brandon Ayuk uh, at, at, at like no percent ownership at t- scoring twenty eight fantasy points. Yeah, um, just couldn't quite get the rest of those of the Ayuk lineups to cooperate. Let's put it that way. Um, he, oh, I mean, you, you always have me on him. You know what I mean? Like he's there, he's on my mental upgrade list like every week. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, and so in a, in a game like this, I'll, I'll go right back to all these dudes. You know, I, like, I think that, I think that Kansas, I think that Kansas city is going to put up points. I think that both teams are going to put up points in this game. I don't know what the over under is. I know San Francisco is usually better defensively, but they listen, listen, that's what it is. They gave up, gave up points to Atlanta and Kansas city. I mean, you can't, you can't keep them down too long. You know what I mean? Right. Like they're going to, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to sling it around. And um, I think this game is going to deliver. I think this game is going to be a lot of points. And I think you could go right back to, um, but, but here's the problem again with Kansas city, who the hell do you play? Um, I feel like it's a problem for the Niners too, a little bit. <laughs> now I'll play, I'll play how you can Samuel. Um, uh, I'll, I'll play those guys. As far as the receivers though, for Kansas city, I don't know what to do. Like, Valdez Scantling, uh, you might get a situation where Kelsey might be low owned. Um, I think so. I think, uh, I think he will be. Um, 
So maybe, maybe, maybe you do this. That's the, that's, man, it's so annoying to play when you know the Kansas City games are delivered, you don't know who to play on the Kansas City side. Um, oh, you know who's finally better last week? You could play, uh, you could play Schuster. There you go. So you could play Juju. Um, you could play Samuel. You could play Ayuk. And um, uh, can you go back to Jeff Wilson at 5,800? That's uh, I mean, they, 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 the, oh, as a team, they ran the running backs like not at all last week. Right. Um, with anybody really like you had to, okay. what, they, have, they, have a t- they had 10 total rush attempts. I don't know what happened uh, with that. I think Debo ran a couple times also, but it's not that not enough. I mean, like this is right. weird. Debo at 76 is kind of, it's kind of hard for me to get to. It's a great matchup. I do expect one of he, he or, uh, or IU to have a game here, but I, I don't know. This feels like a game that I want to get pieces of. And I, I honestly don't know what I want. Um, I, I, how about, how about, how about Kittle? Can I interest you in that? I mean, I'm a little bit, I'm open to the Kittle thing. He had finally got his big 10 target game against Atlanta having to throw the ball a lot. My guess is they're going to try to keep the ball on the ground as much as possible, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be with Jeff Wilson. Um, well, he, he should get the bulk of the work. Coleman, you know, was just as active or yeah. more active a couple weeks ago. Um, and then they'll use Debo Samuel and they'll use Ayuk on a couple sweeps or something like that. Uh, I don't know, man. It's Or maybe they won't. They, haven't, they actually haven't rushed Ayuk this year, which oh, they are some ones. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm having a hard time knowing what I really feel excited about in this one. Uh, I like the total. I like, uh, I, I just, I don't know. San Francisco, I have a lot of respect for their defense. And the question is, if if they if they get up early, I don't care how good your defense is. If you if you're gonna if if Casey ends up throwing it a bunch of times, somebody's gonna get there. Outside yeah. of Kelsey, it just really really feels like you're playing a guessing game, trying to figure out who that's gonna be. Yeah. Um, but I you know I, MVS Juju and Hardman, one of those guys, sure. Um, I I don't feel great about any any one of them. And even as they put up points this year, these guys have not been putting up big fantasy games. I will I will say this. Uh, and this is, I think this is, I keep saying to do this, but I just keep forgetting to actually do this. So if you, if you have, if you are set on, on Seattle, for example, and you have like stacks, like fired up with like, with like Metcalf and Lockett, whatever. And then you are just, you just like screwed up in like, the, you know what I mean? Like in the, in the early games or whatever it is, you could pivot to anything you want in the San Francisco game at like one eighth the ownership of the Seattle guys. That's true. And, and, and hope you get lucky. Like, like you get, you first of all, you get, Forget forget the obvious ones like uh, Ayuk as a pivot off of both Lockett and Metcalf, for example. But you know, MVS was, in my opinion, like the industry's kind of popular low owned guy last week. Like everybody was talking about about uh, MVS is probably like a cool like kind of like low owned guy. He ended up doing nothing, like three targets. Mm-hmm. This is like just a perfect situation where no one knows who to play and he gets two touchdowns. Something like right. That. Right. In, in the late in the late slate to break everybody. I actually kind of um, like that call sheet. I can get behind that. Actually, I, I think that makes I mean that makes perfect sense to me. Um, but it should be a fun week. Uh, we'll do we'll have more content coming up for you later this week. I actually probably so I'm gonna have to set my lineups and then just hope nothing changes on Friday because I'm gonna be flying to uh, to Idaho, so I'm not gonna be able to do the editing uh, as of the of the games. Oh, okay. okay. But but I will be ready and I'll and I'll be live on Sunday anyway. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, before appreciate- before we leave, let me yeah. just at least just to finish this off, let you know who which of the which of the defenses that I uh, oh yeah that I came up with. Well, the, the, my top rated one right now is is Cleveland. Um, uh, I forget who they're playing. It's probably a team you don't Baltimore. want to play against. Yeah, Baltimore. Yeah. Um, and then there's Carolina against Tampa. You know, it's like ridiculous. Then there's Tampa. It's like an actual play. I think the Jags are a very strong play against the Giants. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, but as usual, defense is a bit. I won't have more than 15% of any defense. Right, game. right. And I'll, I guess I'll real quickly highlight. I, I have Seattle, LA, and Cincinnati, Atlanta as my two favorites. Uh, my favorite individual plays Fournette, Mixum, uh, Derrick Henry, Adams, Jacobs, Eckler, Andrews, uh, Walker, uh, Lockett, Metcalf, and Everett. Um, but I'm going to obviously need some value in order to play those guys. So I will, I will add one, uh, one more commish play to the, to the list. Last night he gave us a uh, Broncos head over, you know, got halfway there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but this week, uh, he likes, uh, in addition to the Jags, he's, his best bet is that he's the Broncos this week against the Jets. Well, he so. really likes these Broncos. I, I think, I think, I think that's a good bet. Three does seem kind of a little bit silly, um, in Denver. 
All right, guys. They're actually saying the Jets are a better team by saying three. Otherwise, they would have got the three and a half. Yep. Anyway, good luck right. to everyone this week. Uh, we'll again, we'll have more content for you uh, later this week, and uh, let's make some money. Good luck, everybody. All right, later.